Hi, it's Tanya with Red Kernel Crafts, and I'm back with Bobbin Lace. I apologize for it being so long. Uh, it's probably been about, oh my gosh, three, four years. And I just have not picked up my Bobbin Lace since we left Bermuda. And I think the reason why is there was a bit of a fear that I would forget how to do it. And I just pulled it all out last week, and I've been working on it. And uh, it just kind of comes right back to you, which is nice. And um, yeah, so I thought I would just do another bookmark. And um, this one is going to be just all different, well, two different types of spiders, two different ways of doing them. And the thread that I'm using is a blue color. It's called Ice Blue. It's number 216, and I got it from Nordic Needle a long time ago. At the last video I did, um, video 123, with my yellow bookmark, uh, I mentioned that I had bought some threads, and this is one of them. It's a little light, and I apologize. I wish it was a little bit darker. Uh, my next video, I will use a darker thread, but um, I just figured you might just be happy enough <laughs> that I'm back. So I'm shooting above here on my phone and I'm shooting over here on my camera because I thought that way I can, I don't know how I'm actually going to edit it. I don't know if I'll do a split screen so you can see what's going on. I don't know um, what people prefer. Some people like to see up close what the needles are doing and what the thread is doing um, as it twists and some people like to see um, the bobbins moving. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of both. Um, the pattern I'm doing today, I've done it a couple times here. I've done it in a green color and you can see that there's a little um, crosshatch little thing going on up there and then we have a spider, we have four spiders um, another four spiders and a really big spider at the end there. And I had done it in a purple kind of variegated color. So there it is there. And like I said, the thread that I'm using is a Leah's brand and it's number 216. I had such a mess the other night with this skein because I'm used to like the DMC threads and it all come out. But this... <laughs> This is how I had to do this the other night. I ended up making three little balls and rolling it all up. I had it so tangled and my back was killing me by the end of it. And um, yeah, it was very sore. This um, this is something I want to do next. This is a little mat that I did at one point and I would like to show you guys how I do one of those. So that'll be in an upcoming video and I'll do this one too, which is all um, rose ground. So that's another video. The other thing I'm trying to do is design my own pattern. I'm having a hell of a time trying to do it. It's um, not as easy as you'd think. So uh, yeah, I would like to do my own pattern and, um, and show you guys that. So let's get started. And we have 12 pairs of bobbins. Let me just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 12 bobbins. And what I'm learning with designing my own pattern is to label it on your paper and put how many bobbins, um, what uh, stitches you're doing, and what thread you're using, the date that you started it, the date you finished it, um, and that sort of thing. So here we go. This is a well-loved pattern. I've used this many times and I re need to um, redo it and do another one. The, the holes are getting a little stretched out, but that's okay for now. So over this top pin, I have um, two bobbins. I'm just going to twist them before I get started. And I'm just going to do a hole stitch with those and pin at the top. So I have my pins on an extra row outside just before I bring them in. And we'll go like that. I'm just going to slide my pins over to the side for now. And then I'm going to bring in another pair. Make sure it's twisted before you start. And I'm just going to be doing whole stitch down through here. Now, through the comments, some people say I talk too much. Some people say uh, it's a good pace and they enjoy the talking. If you don't enjoy um, me talking, you can just mute it. Uh, some people do need uh, the instruction of, of what I'm doing so they can learn. 
So, um, yeah, it's up to you. There is a mute button. <laughs> So you can turn me off if you like. So just as you're coming down the side here, just make sure you give the initial twist to that one. There's a twist on this one too. And you're just doing your whole stitch like that. And then you pin. And then you cover your pin by doing a whole stitch again. And then I just do a little twist at the end. Bring in your next pair. And I have a camera this time that does not like to behave and I'm going to be checking it every once in a while because for some reason while I'm recording it just decides it's done recording and it'll just shut off. I don't know why it does that. I don't know if it's a battery saver but it's really annoying when you're still in the midst of recording and the camera doesn't realize that and it'll just shut off. It's <laughs> so annoying. I'm filming on a Nikon uh, what is it? Nikon Coolpix P600. And it's great for photos, all that kind of stuff. Zooming in is tricky. And um, yeah, having the thing stay on is, is tricky as well. So here's my initial pairs from the beginning. So I'm just grabbing that pair and I'm going to just come down along this side here and do the same thing. So whole stitch, pin, and then cover your pin. And once we're done coming down both sides like this, we're gonna take out those initial pins. I just like getting it all done coming down the sides. And some of my terms, some people will come on and, and correct me and stuff, and I appreciate that, thank you. Some of it is just words that I've been taught by my lace teacher years ago. Some of it is just my East Coast Canadian slang. I'll just kind of make up my own words for things. I know that probably makes things confusing, but anyway, I apologize. And I have seen some bobbin lace videos um, on YouTube, and some people, it's just amazing to watch. They're using hundreds of bobbins, and it's crazy. And, um, but as I was learning, it's hard to learn when, when people are doing it, but not talking about what they're doing or it's in a different language and it's hard to understand. So again, that's why I tend to talk about what I'm doing. Okay. So now we're going to move all the pins over and we're going to start taking out, um, those pins that were holding everything in the beginning. And then all you do is just grab onto your bobbins and just kind of pull. I'm going to take out the pins coming down that side. And then those are the only pins you take out um, as you're working. So you just kind of wiggle it and that initial little loop will just kind of come out. It just depends on which bobbin you pull on. And don't pull, pull too, too hard. And then as you're working, um, like once we get down towards the bottom of the pattern, you can take some of your pins out. Usually I just leave mine all in until it's ready and I remove them the next day. So now we're just going to come down this right hand side and pull these out. and we're good to go. So we're going to start at this top um, hole here. We're going to work down the left side. So just make sure you start with a twist. We're just going to do a whole stitch, pin, cover your pin with a whole stitch and twist it. We're going to come down to the next one, whole stitch, Pin, and then cover your pin. I was surprised at how easy this came back to me. Um, I did have to watch some of my old videos, so I'm glad I filmed those. I'm glad I did that. And uh, especially for the end for the tail, because that can be tricky to do. 
I started one the other day. I actually completed it, but the top of my um, bookmark did not end up working out too good. Up here in the in the very top where I started, it ended up separating. So I did something wrong there, and hopefully <laughs> I didn't do that again today. If I could have somebody, if I could pay somebody to come in <laughs> and wind the bobbins for me, that would be great. That's the part I do not like about bobbin lace is loading the bobbins. So I'm just going to push everything over to this side, over to the left, because we're done with that. And now we're going to come in and go down the right hand side. Same stitch, just the whole stitch. I ended up getting some uh, great bobbin lace books from the library. One of them had to go back. It was little motifs, and that's a little beyond my skill set. <laughs> But um, there's a great one. It's just called, let me just grab it for you and show you. Um, this one here, there was the Practical Skills in Bobbin Lace. And that's a nice book, but this one was great. And I think a lot of you would like this. It's the Torshan Lace Making uh, by Jan Tree. There you go. I can't say it. But what's great about this is she uses color with her um, stitches and a lot of you have asked if I could do some of these in color and that's not something I've ever done so I don't want to create a whole big mess but she has very detailed photographs and it's a great book I've seen it um, on Amazon for brand new about $35 and I've seen um, it used for about $20 this is the one that I bought years ago. I managed to get it for about, oh my gosh, it was a, I think I have my receipt in the back. 20 pounds for it. Um, and I got it on eBay, but I've seen this thing for about $200 on eBay. So it's crazy. And it's a good book too, but I really like that other one. So maybe check that out. Um, I think it's I think it's worth it, especially if you're a beginner and you're trying to figure out what the threads are doing. The fact that she does it in color is really nice. And now I see why people have requested me to do that. It's just something I've never done. And um, I honestly, I don't think I have that many color threads uh, to do it. But And I'm a little concerned about this one today being so light, but it seems to be okay so far. So I hope you're enjoying this. Okay, so we're just going to slide everything back over. We're going to do the same thing coming down. We're going to go down each side of this motif that we have here. This is all just whole stitch, so just keep working. your pin. So you're not going to hear the guinea pigs anymore and you're not going to hear the tropical birds anymore. We now live in Seattle. It's a gloomy kind of gray day because that's just what Seattle <laughs> is like. Uh, we lived in Bermuda for a total of five years. That's where I learned how to do bobbin lace. I used to go to the craft market and my lace teacher Gail is still going out there. She's usually there on Thursday. So if you happen to take a cruise or you fly into Bermuda, um, stop by and say hi and tell her that Tanya sent you. And she sells her bookmarks out there at the craft market. Lovely lady. So we're going to swivel these over. Now my husband works for hotels, so that's why we lived in Bermuda in the first place. He worked at the Fairmont Southampton, and now he's working at the Fairmont Olympic in Seattle. We live about 20 minutes outside of Seattle, and it's nice and quiet, but what's fun is that you can go into the city, and you're there in about 20 minutes on a good traffic day. <laughs> and it's uh, nice to be able to go in and go to concerts and soccer games and baseball games and... I've not been to a Seahawks game yet. Tickets are a little expensive. 
but we're we're liking it. Um, I do miss some things about the island. I don't miss the crazy heat, but I do miss the fact that I didn't work and I could drive around on my scooter and I could hang out at the dockyard and work on bob and lace <laughs> whenever I wanted to. Um, so yeah, so I miss that part, but uh, it's it's fine. So, okay, so now we're going to come back into the middle and I'm just going to grab one of the other um, bookmarks here. So we do have a spider coming in through here. It's not really a spider. It's just kind of crossing over, but I did twist the leg. So it's just kind of weaving through is what we're doing. And I'm going to uh, twist my legs about three times. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm just twisting them like a spider just so they have some bulk to them. And then on this side, I'm going to do the same. So you're twisting the four pairs of bobbins coming down that side. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with this pair and weave it all the way through these four bobbins to the other side. So you're doing a whole stitch, but you're not twisting, you're just bringing it over to the other side like that. And it will all work its way into place, but I just like to kind of wiggle the bobbins and help it along a little bit. When I get to the other side, I want to twist one, two, three, uh, just so I don't forget. So now I'm going to go back, I'm going to grab another pair coming off from the left, and I didn't twist these bobbins here. I'm just going to work it through and these are just going to stay flat coming through here. So I twisted them initially to bring them in, but now that they're in here, I'm not twisting them. You can see how they're all still straight and there's no twist there. So then I have it over to the side. I'm going to go one, two, three, and then just put him aside. Just kind of wiggle everything so it's getting in place like that. And I'm going to carefully slide them this way, bring in another pair from the left and work those ones over through these four sets. Like that. And then one, two, three. And then bring over the last pair. And as I've been bringing these ones this way, obviously these ones are going this way. over here and now I'm going to twist these ones three times now that they're through. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Okay, I'm just going to wiggle until I get them in place and I'm just kind of following the guidelines that are underneath so I can see where everything's supposed to land. Like that, and then it ends up being like a nice little woven piece here in the middle. Like that. Okay, I'm just going to pin these ones off to the side for a minute because I have to bring these ones back over and link them up coming down along here. So I have this first line that came across the top here, and I have this one twisted. This one was twisted three times. And I'm just going to do a whole stitch. Cover my pin and twist. And then before I forget, I'm going to bring this one down on the side. Whole stitch and twist. I'm going to move this one out of the way and I'm going to bring the next one down right to there. So my legs are twisted three times coming off of there. This one's just twisted once. Whole stitch. Pin. 
whole stitch and then I'm twisting it. All right, and then I've got these ones that's twisted three times. And I'm going one, two, three. Like that. One, two, three. Twist. And then I'm bringing down the last one. And again, it's twisted three times. This is only twisted once. Whole stitch. So then we're done over here. So I'm going to come back to this side, swivel all my little bobbins over this way. And then this is twisted once, this is twisted three times. We're going to do a whole stitch and we're going to pin right in that little hole there. stitch and a twist. We're going to bring this one down and get that hole done. I'm always scared I'm going to forget the ones on the side. Like that. Alright, so this one's twisted once. This one's three times. Just a whole stitch. Next one. And the last one. There we go. And then we can bring these two middle ones down and do a whole stitch to finish that off. And what I like to do sometimes is just go back in with one of the corsage pins and just kind of straighten out some of my threads so it looks good like that. And there we go, have, we have a little woven piece there. So now what we're going to do, I'm just going to keep these ones over to the right and we're going to slide everything over and then work our way down here down this little triangle this is just going to be whole stitch um, repeating all the way down and then we'll get into um, our spider when we get down to the bottom there so just whole stitch cover your pin or put your pin then cover it with another whole stitch and then twist Oops. <laughs> so whole stitch, pin, cover your pin with a whole stitch and twist. Remember as you're working, my bobbins had started out pretty much the same length. Now I got a little short one here so I can just unwind him a little bit. And I can see what's happening is that it's not twisted around the little neck part. There we go. What I like about bobbin lace is it's easy, easy to undo. Like knitting, I've been knitting lately. I joined a little knitting group and you get talking and then you look back down and you're like, Wow, it was a blanket, now it's a sock. Like you're just kind of, you get distracted. And um, with this, you can get distracted as well. I've, I've noticed in some of my videos, some of you will point out like, oh, you made a mistake there. And I don't see it, obviously, because I'm talking and I'm working. <clears throat> and it gets a little tricky when you're trying to do both. But um, yeah, at least you can undo it. I did a bookmark the other day down to about here. Um, one that I had designed and I realized it wasn't working, so I was able to undo the whole thing. I got to a point where I was just going to cut the thread and say, oh, the heck with it, I'll just start over. And then I remembered, oh my god, that means I have to rewind all those bobbins again. So I was like, nope. And I sat there and patiently undid everything. Um, undid all the stitches and removed the pins and worked my way backwards. And I did not have to do the bobbins again. 
So I'm just gonna, I'm down at the sides now, I'm down at the very bottom one, so I'm just gonna grab the two from either side and go in with a whole stitch and do that one there. And, and you can come down this whole side and then go back and do this side. I kind of like working um, one side and then the other side and just keep it even as I'm, as I'm coming down. So this is more of the same, it's just whole stitches coming down here. So if you don't mind, I'll continue with story time. <laughs> um, we left Bermuda in the fall of 2015, and we stayed in the hotel for a while until we could find a house and we could get the kids situated in school. It was a very hard move for our daughters. Our oldest one, Bryn, was going in grade 10 and our other daughter Kerrigan was going into grade 7. It was a really hard, hard move for them. They loved Bermuda. Um, I myself was not as much of a fan and I've, I've, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I've realized why and it was because I didn't work and I hadn't worked because I was a stay-at-home mom and when we lived in Florida and then lived in Bermuda I wasn't allowed to work in those countries um, based on our visa. And then when we moved here, my husband said, you get to work. And I'm like, yay. <laughs> I wasn't too excited about that idea because it had been so long and I was scared. Um, I ended up going back to work in um, the summer of 2016 and I went to a print shop because I was um, trying to get a graphic design job there. That's uh, what my profession had been uh, before we had kids. And I worked in a in a print shop and of course the day I showed up the job was already taken and the guy talked me into doing a sales job which I didn't mind initially and it was okay and I was just excited that I was back to work and I wasn't completely petrified and I was also thrilled with the idea that someone was going to hire me after 16 years of being a stay-at-home mom and the problem was the company was very cheap and I, um, I was getting frustrated because I was doing a sales job and using my own car and my own gas and they were not paying me for gas and mileage and I racked up about 20,000 kilometers on my car um, which they did not pay me for. So <laughs> I knew it was time to leave and um, a friend of ours works in the schools and um, he worked in like the cafeterias and stuff and helping out in classrooms, so I applied to do something like that. Um, my very first day I worked with kids with special needs in an LRC2 program. Um, it's like a, uh, what do they call it, LRC2? It's like Learning Resource Center is what they call it. And I absolutely loved it and I adored the children and it was great and it was at a middle school. Um, so I kept subbing. I never did do the food um, part of things, I went right into classrooms and I was just helping out and I was basically a bodyguard in the back of the classroom for some of the classes. And I was just frustrated because every day you had to go on and see if there was a job available. Um, and if there wasn't, you didn't work that day. And if there was, you took the job and signed on to do it and that was it. And then the next day you had to do the same thing. So there was days where I was up till, you know, up at you know, two in the morning trying to see if there was a job posted and trying to grab it before anybody else did. Um, so I was getting frustrated with that and I talked to um, my supervisor and I said, this is kind of crazy. Like, is this what life is going to be like every day? I got to fight for a job. And she said, well, why don't you look for something full time, an actual, you know, full time position. And I did. And it just so happened that there was one of those jobs, the LRC uh, to working with kids with special needs, but it happened to be at a high school and it also happened to be at my daughter's um, high school. So it worked out perfectly. I went and I um, did it for three days kind of as a training thing and they liked me and they hired me and it has been the best thing I've ever done. And 
you know, I'm an artist, I'm a crafter, and that's what I thought um, my job was going to be. And that's what I always try to do. And I got into this job and I just, I feel like it's where I'm supposed to be in life. I love helping people. Um, you know, I'll find strangers on the street and ask them if they need help and it drives my family crazy. Um, but that's just always how I've been. And I, I get that from, um, my dad. And, uh, so being able to help these kids, uh, every day was just like, oh my gosh, I just, I love it. And, uh, it was a great year. And the, the bonus um, not only do I love my job, I get summers off because I work in a school. So I'm off for the summer. So that's why I was able to get out the bobbin lace and... Problem with the camera shutting off is it doesn't beep <laughs> when it does it. Um, yeah, so uh, I get to have summers off. And so I thought, perfect time to pull out the bobbin lace and give it a go. Uh, again and last year I ended up doing subscription boxes and I was busy with those for an entire year and it was a lot a lot a lot of work and I was pretty much burnt out by the end of making all those and um, yeah I, I was just kind of done with crafting for a while so uh, I've just been doing daily drawings and things like that um, I have a sketch journal I've been doing some sketching videos um, on this channel. So that's been keeping me busy. And I thought, you know what, it's just time to get out the bobbin lace and do, uh, another video. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with my job. And unfortunately the two main teachers I worked with have both left. Uh, they left at the end of this year. And so I don't know what next year is going to hold. Um, we're going to be obviously getting some new teachers and I'm a little nervous about that. But at the end of the day, I still get to work with um, the kids. We have, I think, four or five new kids coming into our program and really looking forward to that. And I actually got to meet a couple of them at the end of the year. So, um, yeah, so I'm very excited, very happy um, with my job. And you just never know. Like, I tried to get a graphic design job for years, and it turns out I'm well suited to, to work with kids with special needs, and I'm absolutely loving it. So it couldn't have worked out any better. But, ooh, I'm not done down here. So we're ready to do our spider and our spider comes in the same way we came in at the top here for this woven part, but um, the legs, instead of just going straight across, they're going to come in and then come back to their same side again. So they're going to come in and go through to the other side. So let's just get our legs ready. So we have four sets of legs. These two pairs of bobbins um, stay out and we're going to twist these, so we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. They already have one twist, so that's why I'm like one, two, three, trying to figure it out. Okay, and then we're going to come down this side and do the same thing. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. I like getting them all twisted at the beginning and then I don't um, forget. Okay, so we're gonna have the left side come over and go through the right side. So I'm gonna take this one pair of legs and that's gonna go over through all these. And don't twist your legs once you're going in through um, the middle of all this. You're only twisting them on the initial um, pass. Okay, so I've got my first pair of legs going through like that. Then we're going to bring the next pair through. So same as we did at the top, but it doesn't end the same way. So 
I'll show you what happens once we get all four of these legs over. And remember, we're not twisting anything else as we're going through. So we have three sets over. We just have to bring this last set over. All right, so now we have everything. The left side came over to the right, the right side came over to the left. Now we're gonna pin, and we're gonna pin right dead center in the middle of that um, little motif. We're gonna pin. So you're gonna wanna wiggle everything. Just gentle, just gently pull on your bobbins. Like that, and it makes a nice little woven thing. Now what we're gonna do is go back over. So these ones are gonna come back over to the left and these ones are gonna come back over to the right. So again, you're just doing a whole stitch. And when you get your little guy out to the side, twist his legs, one, two, three, and we're done with him. Okay, now we're gonna grab another pair from the left and have him go through all four pairs. And then at the end, one, two, three. Twist his little legs, pin. Bring another set down. Again, don't twist anything. You just twist their legs at the end. One, two, three. Just gonna tighten this guy up a little bit. All right, and then we bring the last pair over. Whole stitches going through. Like that, twist. Pin him off to the side, and now we have all these on this side, so we want to twist. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And there is our big, crazy spider. So just wiggle your legs. Just make sure everything's laying flat. And it makes like a, like a little rounded diamond, like a little teardrop kind of shape. Now what we have to do is I'm just gonna swivel them down like that. And I'm gonna start bringing in the bobbins from the side. So this pair here is gonna join up with this one. And then you're just back into hole stitch again. move him out of the way. And now this pair, he's only twisted once. The legs are twisted three times. Just double check that before you finish. Twist. And then same with this. This one has one twist. This is three. I always want to twist right before I put the pin in. And then this last pair. Twisted three times, twisted once. And there you go. So those ones are done. We're just gonna leave this one down here for now because it's gonna end up going down at the very bottom. Then you just wanna swivel everything down from the right hand side. We're bringing in the pair over here. Make sure this is only twisted once and this is twisted three times and we're pinning up into here and we're doing a whole stitch. I like this thread, it's very nice. Nice and thin compared to some of the threads that I've used. I like whole stitch, I like it better than half stitch. I just find it, it just feels more finished. And then the last pair. Twist. 
twist and then we'll just bring down this last pair and finish it right to the corner, right to the end here. And there we go. All right. So I'll be back with the next part in a second. I got to take a break, give my cameras a break and my back, my back's hurting a little bit today. All right. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I am back. Things might have shifted a little bit. My phone's dying that I'm filming on up here, and uh, I had to plug it in. So hopefully everything is good. Alrighty, so we're just going to go back up to the sides here and come down with whole stitches. And it's just pretty much the same as what it, we've been doing. So I'm going to film, but I'm just going to speed through um, and just do a little bit of a time lapse here just so um, the video is not too, too long. Okay, so we have all our bobbins done down each side. Um, something that I wanted to point out too, when you're working on a pattern and if you've done the pattern um, many times, uh, what you need to do, sorry, I've got something on my phone, there we go. Um, what you need to do is the next time I work on a pattern, I'll turn it, I'll turn my pillow and place the pattern going this way because what happens if you keep using the same part of the pillow, the foam underneath is just going to get worn out because you keep poking the pins in the same exact holes going down. So make sure every time you um, finish uh, a bookmark or whatever it is you're working on, um, make sure before you do your next pattern, um, even if it's the same pattern, just pick it up uh, off your pillow and twist it and move it in a different um, direction just so it doesn't get worn out. Okay, so now we have four um, little spiders. So it's just mini versions of the one up here. And I'll show you on this one what that looks like. Let me just put a piece of paper in behind so you can see it a little bit clearer. So it's the same idea. So you're only bringing in two legs this time. They're branching off, but then they go right into other spiders again. And then the, the two legs come off of each one and into another spider. So there's four spiders um, all together. So that's going to be on here and then the one down below. But I'll show you this one. So you've got two legs coming in from the left hand side, two legs coming in from the right hand side. Make sure you've got the right legs. And we're just going to pin things out of the way for now. And like always, make sure you have three twists. One, two, three. 
one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so you're gonna take this first out of all these bobbins. Let me just lengthen these ones a little bit. So you're gonna take this, just making sure I'm on all the cameras here. Where am I? Right here, I don't wanna go up too high. Okay, so I've got four sets of um, bobbins. So you're gonna take this second set and weave it through these ones and then take this set and weave it through the rest of them or the other two. So it's going this way and then just leave him for a minute. This one here is coming through these. Don't twist, but we're gonna pin. So the four sets of bobbins have just crossed paths. We're gonna do that. We're gonna repeat it again. This set's gonna go through these two, then this set's gonna go through them. Remember, don't twist anything. Okay, and now we're at the end of this whole thing, so you're gonna go one, two, three with this pair. You're gonna bring this far left side over. All right, now everything is crisscrossed each other, so you're gonna go one, two, three with this pair. One, two, three and one, two, three. Okay, now just wiggle everything. Make sure you've got your little kind of teardrop diamond round sideways eyeball <laughs> shape. I don't really know how to describe this. Okay, so we're gonna take this, these uh, two pairs, pin them out for, or pin them aside for a second. I'm gonna bring these two down. We're gonna bring in the next two pair from over here. They're coming in from the side. Make sure they're twisted, one, two, three. The next one, one, two, three. And these ones we just twisted when we were done that. So those are already twisted three times. Same idea, you're gonna take the second pair, weave it through these two, and then you're gonna take this pair and weave it through. Don't twist anything. Then take this far left pair and bring that through. Okay, so you've done your first crossover thing. You're going to pin, wiggle, it's a very technical term. <laughs> All right, so we're going to wiggle them. And then again, second pair is going to go through, then the other far left one's going to go through. And don't twist anything at this point. And then this far left pair is going to come over. All right, and then you're done that spider. One, two, three, twist all the legs. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, I'm just gonna move those two out of the way and I'm gonna take these two legs and finish them off on the sides here. So I'm gonna bring in a, this pair here and pin, because we're done with this um, set of bobbins. And I'm gonna bring in this pair. Their legs are twisted three times. Just do a whole stitch. Cover your pin. And twist. Okay, so those ones are done. So we're just gonna move those out of the way. Now, we're not done with these two that came off to the right because they're gonna go in this bottom spider. So we'll just move those over for a minute until we get this set done. All right, so we've got the two legs coming out from the right side and we've got these two coming off of that other spider. These ones we've twisted three times. These ones that we just brought in, we haven't twisted yet. So you gotta twist them one, two, three times, okay? Same thing, second pair is gonna go over through and then the far left pair is gonna go over through. And don't twist anything. And then we're gonna pin right in the middle, wiggle, like that. And then again, second pair moves across. And now we're done. Okay, so now twist your legs. One, two, three. This one's a little short. And then these ones. 
And just like we did over here, I'm going to finish these two off over here by bringing in this pair from the side. So I'm going to do my whole stitch, pin, cover it, and twist. And then same with this, and this one's twisted three times, this is only once. Pin and twist. So now we'll move those out of the way because we're done with them. And now we've got one more spider to do. So now it's the legs coming off of the left hand spider and the legs coming off the right hand spider. And they're all twisted three times already. Same as we were doing before. The second pair is going to go through and then the far left pair is going to go through. Like that. And then we're going to pin right in the middle of the spider. Like that. And then again, second pair goes over to the right, and the far left pair is going to come over to the right, and we're done. Twist. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then just move everything, wheel everything into place, put the two over to this side. We're going to use the left pair and bring down our bobbins from the left side and join those up with a whole stitch coming down and finishing that side off. And finish with a twist. Like that. Twist. Now we're doing, going to do the same with the right hand side. Bring this last pair that we had worked and we're just going to finish off these two pairs of bobbins that we just finished with that spider. Make sure those legs are twisted, which we would have done at the end. That's why I do that, so that when I go to do this next move, I don't forget to twist the legs. Like that, and then we're just going to bring down the two center ones, and then we're going to finish off with a whole stitch. Cover your pin, whole stitch, and twist. So there's your four little mini spiders in there. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so now it's the same. We're just doing whole stitch. We're going to do the spiders again, and then we're going to do the big spider. So I'm going to just do whole stitch, and I'll come back when I'm about to do those mini spiders again, just so you can see it again.
Okay, so like we do with spiders, twist the legs. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. So I'll show you this spider again. I'll speed through the whole stitch because you know that by now. And then I'll do the big spider. I'll show you that again. I'll speed through the whole stitch and then I'll show you how we finish this off. So we have our three spiders. Remember you take the second pair, run it through, and then take the far left pair and run it through. And don't twist anything as you're doing this part. And then you pin once you get everything to its proper sides. Wiggle. And then second pair again runs through. And then we're done. Our first little spider. So twist all your legs. Oops, <laughs> I didn't count. One, two. Three, one, two, three. Two, three. All right, so now we can pin two off to the side for now. We're going to bring two down from this side. Again, make sure you get the right pairs. One, two, three. One, two, three. These ones are already twisted. Same thing, second pair goes over to the right. The far left pair now comes over to the right. Once you get them crossed over like that, then you pin, wiggle, and then second pair over again, and then far left pair. And we're done another one. And then twist one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So yeah, always remember to twist your legs because then no matter what you're doing next, which this one we're going to finish off and pull them in with this far left pair, not the far left pair, but the pair over on the left, and we're going to wiggle, but we're okay doing that because we know we've already done the twists in the legs. Because nothing worse than getting done a whole pattern and then you look back and you see your mistakes. Most people won't see your mistakes, <laughs> but you'll know they're there. If you're like me, that'll drive you crazy. So it's a lot of work. All right, so these legs are twisted on these ones. So we're gonna bring in two pair from the right side. Make sure they're the right ones. And when I say make sure they're the right ones, you might have this bobbin twisted in with this one. See what I mean? And it's not the right pair of bobbins. So you gotta make sure you've got the, the right pair. And these, the bobbins happen to match. Um, the beads on these ones happen to match. That doesn't always stay the case depending on, um, I'm just twisting the legs. Whoops, I don't know how many times I did that. One, two, three. One, two, three. Because um, when I first bought my bobbins, I was so stressed out. I was like, oh my God, not all the bobbins match. Well, and I've seen since then, since I bought my bobbins, I've seen that um, sometimes it doesn't matter. Depending on the pattern you're doing, the bobbins will get all mixed up and all screwed up. And it really doesn't matter what color the beads are on the bottom of them because um, they're all going to get mixed up anyway. Sometimes it is important to have a matching pair, especially if we're doing um, like a special design coming down the side. You need sp uh, specific bobbins. And usually what I'll do then is I'll use some of the bobbins um, that my lace teacher gave me, which she was kind enough to do. Um, she gave me some of her bobbins and they're very different from the ones I own. Um, so I'm able to tell the difference. There, so we got those spiders done. I'm just going to pull this pair in from the side and finish this one off. Same with this one, and I've done my twists. So the legs are fine. Alrighty. So we're done with those. So now we're going to bring down the two that have been on the right and the two that have been on the left. Make sure they're the right ones. Nothing's wonky. Make sure you have your three twists done for each of them. And now we're going to 
bring that second pair over. I think someone who would have really enjoyed this craft was my mom. I think she'd really, I think she really would have got into it. I don't think she'd be, you know, designing patterns and stuff. I don't think she'd get that heavy into it, but I think she would have enjoyed like the process and moving the little bobbins and stuff. I could see her getting into that. I'd love to teach my sister someday and I'd love to teach my daughters because it is kind of a rare art. At least, I mean, you don't see it around Seattle. Although, I must say, I was in a bookstore the other day and I found um, a bobbin lace book and I was looking at it and this woman walked by and she said, oh, that's a good one. And I'm like, you know bobbin lace? And she's like, yeah. She's like, I just do bookmarks. And I said, oh my gosh, I have a YouTube channel. And I said, I'm Red Cardinal Craft. She's like, oh, very cool. And then that was kind of it. But it was just weird to run into somebody as I was looking at the book who knew um, what it was. It's You don't always find that um, people have heard of it or seen it. And a lot of people, when we worked at the table at the craft market, a lot of people thought it was um, tatting. It gets um, confused for tatting all the time. And there we go. We've got our four little mini spiders. So now I'm just going to speed through and go down the sides. Um, you can see earlier I was working down the left, and then I go to the right and the left and go to the right. You can do that. Um, and then sometimes it's just easier to work all the way down one side and get one side done and then come down the other side. Less moving of the bobbins when you do it that way. Alright, so we're just going to pin these two out of the way, get the four pairs on this side ready, we'll pin the two on this side out of the way, slide everything up so you can see what I'm doing, just going to lengthen the bobbins just a little bit, just so they're a little more even. Just like we do with every other spider, we get the legs ready. So we got one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then do the ones on the right. All right. You're gonna take these pair and move them on this side and this pair is going to end up coming over on this side. So you take this first pair that's um, closest to the middle 
and you're going to run it through these four pairs over here. You're going to take the next pair coming down from the left, and you're going to run it through. Move it over to the side. I'm going to take this next pair from the left, run it through. And then, I'm just going to tighten this one. And then take this final pair from the left. Like that. And then we're going to pin in the middle. And you're going to wiggle everything like that and get it all nice and neat. But we're not going to twist any legs yet because we're not done because we now have to bring them back to the other sides. So you're going to take this left pair and bring it back over this way. Take the next pair from the left, bring it through, and don't twist anything. Next pair, bring it through the other four pairs, and then the final pair. done. Just kind of wiggle everything into place, one bobbin at a time. Just make sure everything's snug, but t not too snug, because you don't want to pull it so tight that you mess up the design. Like that. And then you gotta twist your legs. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then this side, one, two, three, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then just move these ones over. We'll work with these ones. I find it hard when you get to the bottom of the pillow and the bobbins start wanting to hang off the edge. Okay, so. We're just going to bring these in from the side and just do whole stitch to join those up. So these bookmarks, I mean, I've sped things up and stuff, but they probably take, not including the winding of the bobbins, they probably take a good two hours um, to make. If you're not filming and stuff, you can probably go a little bit quicker. Um, this just goes a little slower because I'm looking up at the camera and I'm making sure that um, I'm in the shot and stuff. Um, so it takes a little bit longer to work because you're concentrating in a different way. <laughs> you're concentrating and trying to talk and film at the same time. And not make mistakes because I know you guys are watching very closely and you'll know if I do make a mistake. So our spider's done, everything's brought to the side. I'm going to finish this side and this side and come down to the bottom. Just don't do this very last row of um, pins 
and then I'll show you how uh, we finish off. So let me just get this part all done and get everyone down to that final row. So we're going to come down this side, leave these ones over to the side, so make sure you have the right amount of bobbins coming down. So there's one for that hole, one for this one, one for this one, one for this one, one for this one, and one for the very bottom. Okay, so here's the very bottom pin and we see two threads coming off of that one. Okay, so these ones are all pinned out of the way. So let's just give everything an initial twist, so everything has one twist to it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a pair of bobbins and bring it all the way down to the to the end. And what it's going to do is end up getting this one from the very end and move it in down to the very bottom. Okay, so we're going to take these last two um, pairs of bobbins. We're just going to do a hole stitch. We're going to pin. Then we're going to cover the pin. Now this one we're going to run down through all these other bobbins. And we're not going to do any more twists because we don't want too much bulk in this area and that's what will happen. So we've got this guy all the way down. We're just going to wiggle a little bit and we're just going to pin him out of the way. Now we're going to take the next pair of bobbins. I'm not twisting anything. I'm just going to bring it through, do a whole stitch, pin, cover the pin, and bring this pair all the way down through everything else. Okay, and then pin him out of the way. So we want this coming down, it's weaving through all these, but you just don't want it too poofy. Now again, we're going to take the far left pair, 
Oh. We're going to do a whole stitch. We're going to pin. And as you can see, this the pair from the side is now coming away from that corner, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to weave that through all the pairs. When it gets down to the end, we're just going to pin it aside. We're going to take the next pair that's on the far left, whole stitch, pin, kind of wiggle everything just so things aren't getting too tangled. Bring it all the way through and pin it out of the side, out of the way. And then we've got the last pair here. We can get a pin. And we're going to pin and then we're good. Now the very bottom hole is open and that's okay. So now that all our bobbins on the, in this section are together, you can just move them over like a clump. Okay, because we're done with those. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. We got a pair of bobbins for each pin coming down. And each one of these has an initial twist just because it's coming off of these other hole stitches. So we're going to do a hole stitch. We're going to pin, cover the pin and then bring this pair down through all the other ones. Oh, this guy was twisted a couple extra times. And then we're going to move that guy out of the way. Okay, now bring the next ones down. Now I'm not twisting anything anymore. So pin and then keep bringing it down through. All right, I'm just going to extend his little threads a little bit. Pin him off to the side. Then we're going to take the next pair, twist, or not twist, um, pull stitch, <laughs> and then we're going to cover our pin and then bring it down through the rest of them. And pin him out of the way. We're going to do a whole stitch. We're going to pin, cover the pin, and then bring him down to the end. And then we've got our last pair. Whole stitch, pin, and we did it! Yay! Okay, so take this grouping, put it over here. At this point, you want to lengthen your bobbins quite a bit, just to make it a little easier to work with. Um, this group here can stay the same. This one that's down in the middle, find his counterpart over here. Where is he? This guy here. So you've got your two middle bobbins. Let's see. Like that. Okay, so we got these ones in the middle. Sorry, I'm balancing this on my other bobbins and a book. Okay. So you're going to take these two middle bobbins. Okay, you've got them like that. I'm sorry, this phone, I can't lift up any higher, but I've got the other camera going and you can see. Uh, what's happening on the side. So we've got a group of bobbins here on the left and we've got a group of bobbins here on the right. You're going to take the left set here, you're going to go over and under. This one you're going to do under and over. Okay, so this, this always confused me. So this one this thread goes over and around and underneath that part, and this one goes under and over. So the thread is coming around from the left side, it's coming from underneath, and from the right side, it's coming over the top. Then you take your bobbins and you twist, and you pull it fairly tight to get them close together, 
And I'm just going to hold that and take a little pin and put it in the very bottom hole of this thing. Okay. And we're going to do that again. Once I untangle my bobbin. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go over and under. And the ones on the right are going to go uh, under <laughs> and over. Okay. And then you take them in the middle. Just give them a twist like that and cinch them up nice and tight again. Okay, and you can put another pin there if you want to. I like to do that because it just holds it for me. Do it again. Under, or sorry, over and under. And this one is under and over. And then you just twist again. And it's making like a, a little kind of braid coming down there. Okay, over and under. And this is under and over. And twist. I'm going to do another pin. Over, under, under, over. And then twist. And you can do as many of these as you want. I think I'm going to do one more. Okay. I'm going to go over and under and under and over. And we're going to twist. All right. So we're good. Now I'm going to do it one more time. Over, under under, over. Now what you're going to do is you're going to tie these just as if you were tying your shoes. You're just going to do just a knot and do it once. Do it again. It's a little <laughs> tricky with the bobbins. We're going to do it twice and one more for good luck. We're going to do it three times and there you go. And that little knot is going to get all mixed in with all these little tails coming in. And guess what? We are done. You can now flip your bobbins off and just pull the threads off. You can leave the weight of your bobbins just to pull on it for a couple um, hours, leave it for a few days. And then my tails, I just kind of do, let's see, it's a little, it's about three quarters the length of um, my thing. So basically where my pattern's ending, the tail kind of goes to the bottom of the pillow, but you can make the tail any length that you would like. Um, so there is our Bob and Lace with Spiders. I'm going to take a few of these pins out just so you can see all our lovely hard work that we've done. It was weaved at the top, then we did the big spider, we did the little spiders coming halfway down, and I would leave most of your pins in. I'm just doing this to kind of show you what we've just accomplished, um, just so you can see it a little bit better. But uh, yeah, just leave it for the next day. Um, and what you can do if you have some extra bobbins, you can wind those up and get ready for your next project. But um, we did it. We made another bookmark. I'm sorry it's been so long, as I as I mentioned, um, <laughs> way over to the left. Um, as I mentioned, um, we had been in the process of moving, and then we got here, and we had to get set up, and I was doing other crafts, and um, excuses, excuses. <laughs> the main uh, the main problem was that I was terrified after putting um, my bobbin lace away for so long that I was not going to be able to pick it up again. But as you can see, um, I pulled this out about a week ago and I messed around with it, tried one pattern, and I was able to um, I was able to do it. And it's like riding a bike; it just comes right back to you. So, like I mentioned, I'm going to come back with another bookmark. Um, I think we'll do the rose ground one next. And then I have to practice this one again, but it's my little um, mat, and those are really cute. Um, and they're fun. I've done one in a variegated, and I didn't like it as much. This is um, 
there's two different ones. This one has spiders and this one has um, rose ground and a spider. So I'm not sure which one I'll do. Um, but at some point I will be back with Bob and Lace and I thank you so much for being so patient and thank you so much for liking and subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. Um, you can click the little bell and it'll give you notifications of when I have a new video coming out and um, thank you so much for watching and good luck with your Bob and Lace. I will be back with some other craft videos as well. I'll be doing some urban sketching. Um, we have a trip coming up and I'm going to do some sketches uh, while we're on that trip, so I'll be showing that, and I'll do some other sketching videos as well. I have not forget about Project Life. I will have Project Life coming at some point. I do want to get caught up with stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with some more videos soon. All right, take care, guys. See ya.